Fig Fan. Welcome back to the Fig Heel YouTube channel. And today I am going to be going over the top 10, or we should just say worst 10 figures, of 2020. The top 10 worst figures of the year 2020. Now it has been a crappy year. However, not necessarily a crappy year for wrestling figures. I mean, if you think about it, we got a whole new line of action figures for a new wrestling company. We haven't had that in forever. So I won't say that this year has been a dud as far as collecting. However, that does not mean that there hasn't been some bad figures. Now, as I go through this list, there may be some things you don't, you don't agree with, you disagree with, and that's fine. We're all different. We all like different things. However, this is my top 10 worst figures of 2020 list. These are the 10 worst figures in my opinion, okay? Now, one thing I've learned about wrestling figure collectors or just toy collectors in general is that our eyes all go to different things. Um, if you watch the best, the top 10 best figures of 2020, one of the um, best in my opinion was John Moxley. A lot of people didn't like that figure for one reason, and that is the scale. They think that he's too tall for John Moxley. He may be. However, I was raised in the old school. Okay, I came up in collecting when scale wasn't a thing. In reality, scale has only been around for about 10 years now. In wrestling figures of correct scale. Pretty much the majority of my life of collecting, every figure has been the same size. Aside from like giants like Big Show and Andre the Giant, they've been all pretty much the same size. So scale's never been a big thing for me. However, likeness resemblance of things, weird deco, those are the things that stick out to me, and that's what these lists are, are driven by for me. So you may disagree with some things, and that's fine. Let's talk about them below in the comments. So don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. You'll also notice I'm wearing the new Let Him Suffocate shirt. You can get this on prowrestlingtees.com slash figure with a bunch of other stuff, so please check it out and support the channel. Without further ado, we are going to get into Fig Heels, Top 10 Worst Figures of 2020. Coming in at number 10 is a figure that, I'll be honest with you, I love it. I think this figure is great. However, it doesn't look great. It's something I've wanted for a while. Um, technically, this came out in 2019 because uh, a warehouse company was selling these. However, these did not make it widespread distribution until this year. Um, and that is... The Loyal Subject Series 3 Rowdy Roddy Piper. Now, as I said, some people had this last year due to a, a collectible store or warehouse that got cases of them somehow. We thought that this series was lost for the longest time. Just in the past couple months, Five Below has started picking these up and they've made widespread distribution in the U.S. Now, why is this figure on my top 10 worst figures of 2020. Uh, well, let's talk about it. His smile. He looks like he has no bottom teeth. It's weird. I understand what they were going for with that big cheeky smile for Rowdy Roddy Piper. However, it just comes off flat and very strange. But if you know anything about me, I love the obscure. I love the weird stuff. The other reason, we're going we're gonna to probably get a little inappropriate here, but... He's got blue tights on. When has ever, when ever has Rowdy Roddy Piper worn blue tights? They're from the bottom of his knee all the way up. They're not trunks like he actually wore. They're literally blue tights. And I'm hoping that the camera's picking this up. I can't really see because of the way it's aimed, but the hole under his kilt is blue. Very strange. Um... Other than that, it's cool, just weird looking figure. So that's why I put this at number 10. Rowdy Roddy Piper, Loyal Subjects Series 3. <laughs> Coming in at number 9, again, a figure that I love. I love it, but there's some discrepancies and there's some problems with it. And they will be fixed. And that is AEW Series 1. Kenny Omega. 
Now, one thing that sets Kenny Omega apart from other wrestlers, kind of like AJ Styles, is his hair. Okay, we all know that Kenny Omega curly hair that just stands out. And uh, oh yeah, he's got the curly hair, but it's black and gray. Kenny Omega has blonde locks. He's never had pitch black hair like this with gray highlights. It's very, very strange. It was fixed on the Ringside Collectibles exclusive authentic scale ring. However, this kind of fell short. The other part was a problem that all the figures in this series had, and he's incredibly, incredibly pale. However, if you follow people online, some people received a batch of these, not mine, but some people received a batch of these where the abdomen was like a reddish tint and the upper body was this pale. So he was two completely different wrong skin tones, which was very, very strange. So that's why I put Kenny Omega. I love the entrance gear. I love the interchangeable hands. I love the gear. I even love the head sculpt. I just think that the hair makes it very weird and almost like it, it just really doesn't even look like him because of the hair color. This is, however, going to be corrected in a second wave of Series 1. A second, I'm sorry, a second run of Series 1. And uh, I look forward to getting that Kenny Omega to just really feel like I have the complete figure of the way it was supposed to look. But for right now, we have this black-haired, black and gray-haired Kenny Omega with very, very pale, pale skin. Next up is somebody who recently, um, I want to say debut, but she didn't really debut, but she was wrestling as Reckoning, and her mask came off, revealing that she is, in fact, we already knew, but that she is, in fact, Mia Yim, and that is Basic Series 113 Mia Yim. Now, why is this figure on here? If you just take one look at it, I'm pretty sure that you can confidently figure out why. The head sculpt on this is god awful. Maybe it's not god awful. Maybe it's just the true effects. If you guys watch the channel, you know I have a big problem with true effects. Unless it's it's applied perfectly, it can make the figure look completely off. And I think that's what it did with her. It made her face look like she's bloated, like they found her face down in a lake after two weeks. Her face is completely blown up like a fish, and it's almost got this weird gray tint to it from the true effects, if you look. It's, it's like almost grayish. It's very, very round. Now, now Mia Yim, she may not be a, a, a beauty pageant winner, but she's not a hideous woman. And th this figure is just not doing her justice. It's not looking good. It has the blue hair. It has the baddie pants. But the face, it just doesn't even look like her. No matter how many pictures you look up on Google, because trust me, I've done it. I just don't see it. I just think that this is a big fail for Mattel. Um, and as you know, I'm a big collector of the first time in the line figures. This one's just not cutting it. I might have to get her elite when it comes because being in retribution, she's obviously going to get an elite at some point. Maybe it'll be his reckoning. But that is why me again is... Number eight on the top 10 worst figures of 2020. And next up, we have a, we have a piece that when it was announced, so many people were excited for it because it's something that we've, we've, we've kind of wanted for a long time, right? Like it's one of those things where it's like, you know, it's got to come because it's such an iconic moment. It's something that everybody remembers, but when's it coming? And that was the Brett the Hitman Hart versus Goldberg Elite 2-Pack. On paper, this thing was banging. This thing, they, they could do no wrong, you know? When it was first announced, we knew that he was going to come with the United States title. Boom, selling point for me right there. And that's mainly the reason that I bought this, because it's the only place you can get the WCW United States title. Said that it had the removable... Um, chest plate, abdomen plate, 
It said that it, it had Goldberg with interchangeable heads and a removable shirt. So we are all picturing that Bret Hart is going to look exactly as he looked in this segment on Nitro. You know, he had jeans on. He had the, the, the plate underneath a hockey jersey. They gave us a Nitro t-shirt. First of all, that wouldn't have cut that wouldn't have made the, the segment what it was. He had a, a hockey jersey on. It was baggy, which hid the plate. Took it off, and he was just shirtless with jeans on. They gave us WCW Hitman in like a salmon colored singlet. Not to mention the horrible glasses and the hair. My biggest pro now, granted, I'm sure they conveniently used a picture with his hair in front of his face. Did his hair go in front of his face? Absolutely. But do we need every single Brett the Hitman heart figure to have his hair strands in front of his face, especially this thick? No. We don't need that. It's not necessary. Even when they came out with the Ultimate, it was like everyone had, had this hair. It's not necessary. Do away with this hair, Mattel. Please, just give us a normal-looking Brett the Hitman heart like we used to get. Please. And the saddest part about this for me is that this figure of what Brett was supposed to look like on that night is not going to get remade again. They're not going to do this segment again. It's, it's lost. It was, a, it was a lost cause. So I don't anticipate us ever getting a Brett in jeans and a hockey jersey. It didn't have to be the actual hockey jersey he wore. It could have just been a, a hockey jersey that had the Canadian flag on it or Hitman. Easy as that. But we got a Nitro t-shirt. So that is why I put Brett at number seven on the top 10 worst figures of 2020. Next up is a line that I love and I didn't expect to love. It's fairly new to us as collectors. And that is Masters of the WWE Universe. And this is from Series 4, Seth freaking Rollins. Now, why did I pick this figure? Uh, I think it's great in the sense you can take off his chest, chest protector. And it's Seth Rollins in wrestling gear that you could use with AWA figures or just wrestle your Motus together. Um... I love that his chest protector resembles the piece that he used to wear over his um, for his entrance gear. However, if you just handed me this head and said, figure out who this is, there is a myriad of people that I would guess, but number one on the list would not be Seth Rollins. Number one on my list of who this is would have to be Elias. I think this figure looks more like Elias than Seth Rollins. I mean, just the size of the beard alone indicates that. It's almost as if they were playing to make Elias and they're like, wait, we didn't do Seth yet. I right, give that head to Seth. I know that's not how it happened. But um, very disappointing to me. And in showing you this figure, I noticed that mine... The comic book is completely wedged between the glue and the card, and I'm going to need to replace this because it looks awful. And it's going to make the bubble come off at, in no time. So I need to replace this figure. However, that is why Seth Rollins is easily number six on the worst figures of 2020 for me. Again, this is my list because he looks like Elias. Um, next up, is a figure that I don't own. I don't own this figure, and that's because I think I just think it looks horrible. This figure is from Basic Series 112, and it is I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna <laughs> CGI it in. Sasha Banks. Here she is, here she is right here. Basic series 112 Sasha Banks. Now the reason that this is on the list is they just they just really can't get a good head for Sasha. And in this case, she looks like a painted up crony of the Joker from the Batman animated series. 
Uh, the mouth is way too wide. The lips are way too thick. Her brow is humongous. Um, it's just very, very strange looking to me. And I know I'm not the only one. Plus, the gear is rather generic. Um, just not a good look uh, for Sasha. And I'm sure she wouldn't be happy. I mean, I, anybody would ha be happy with a figure. But I just imagine when you get something that doesn't really look like you, it's disappointing. But uh, that's why this Sasha Banks is definitely on the list for worst figures of 2020. And to follow her up, uh, number four for this is Series 104, Alexa Bliss. Same thing. This is a woman who was very attractive. And they made her look like a English bulldog. Very, very strange face. Um, she has an upturned nose, but not that upturned. And it's very weird how doggish her face looks. Not to mention that the, the body they gave her in the suit is just very, very strange. Um, not much color to it. And I understand that that was probably the MO behind it because you save on deco. However, for somebody who is such a big star, I feel like they really did Alexa Bliss dirty here on basic 104. Look at that face. It's just, I don't know. Very disappointed in that figure. However, following off number four for Alexa Bliss, we are going to talk about another figure who has a very doggish looking face. And that is WrestleMania build a figure set, Mick Foley. Let me first start off by saying, again, I love this figure. I love that I can pose him in the bang bang stance. I love that he, he comes with the wanted t-shirt with the flannel over it. He's got the right kind of sweatpants, sneakers. Very cool. Look at that face. I don't know where they got that. I watched this match over. I looked at pictures from this match, and I can't see where they figured out, oh, yeah, that's going to look just like Mick. He kind of looks like a pug. He looks like a pug to me with hair, with long black hair. An angry pug with long black hair. What were you thinking? Head aside, this is a great figure. You know what? I'm even going to go as so far as say, like, even with the head, it's still a great figure. It's just what the blank is going on here don't know it really took away from everything else but i'm not going to neglect this figure just because of the very weird eyes and and puggish looking face but that's what sets this at number three for me for the worst figures produced in 2020 next up at number two is a figure i was really looking forward to um, it's also from All Elite Wrestling Unrivaled Series 1 by Jazzwares, and it is Cody Rhodes. When they first showed this figure at, I believe, Toy Fair, I was like, wow, I love it. I love this figure. It looks great. Incredible. He's got his tattoo on the chest. He comes with the sledgehammer. Great deco on, on the tights. Great look for Cody. And then it came out. And the prototype picture started showing. And he was crazy white. And then there's something going on with the eyes. Something there. And I was like, oh my god. It's the I like turtles kid. I like turtles. I like turtles. Look at that. I like turtles. I don't know how they made that happen. But it's him. It's the I like turtles kid on Cody Rhodes' body. Now, granted, I do think with a, a better skin tone, this is going to look great. I do think it's going to look great. In fact, I know it's going to because I saw the, the UK exclusive with the ring, and it looks great. However, with the pale skin and whatever's going on with the eyes, there's almost like a shading in, in a sense, and he just looks like the Eye Lake Turtles kid. Very disappointing. Because it is a great figure. And it will be great when they fix it. Right now, though, what we got in 2020, this is not great. But uh, it'll sit in my collection until they fix this. And then 
we will upgrade this bad boy. But until then, we are stuck with liking turtles. So, last but not least, number one on the list of the top 10 worst figures of 2020 for me is another figure I don't own. It's another female figure. It's another basic. It is basic series 109 Lana. Doesn't matter if it's a standard. Doesn't matter if it's the chase. Because both have something that I can't take my eyes off of, ladies and gentlemen. Smack dab in the center of her chest is what resembles a vagine, if you will. I like to call this figure Cooter Suit Lana. Cooter Suit Lana has female genitalia smack dab in the middle of her attire and it is very strange and I promise you if you've never noticed it before if you've never seen this before once you see it you can unsee it and it's on the red version it's on the blue version we got cooter suit Lana and that's coming in at number one for the top 10 worst figures of 2020 so let's recap this list really quickly number 10 we have Rowdy Roddy Piper, Loyal Subjects. Number nine, we have black-haired Kenny Omega. Number eight, we have Mia Yim after she was found face down in a marsh. Number seven, we have Brett the Hitman Hart. In completely wrong attire, it just doesn't fit this pack, and it was very disappointing, which is why it's on here. It's not necessarily okay, it is a bad figure because the colors are off, the face is off, it's just very strange. Um, but I digress. Number six, we have Elias Rollins. Number five, we have basic Sasha, basic 112 Sasha. Number four, we have basic 104 Alexa Bliss. Number three, we have the Pug McFoley. Number two, we have All Elite Wrestling Unrivaled Cody Rhodes. And number one, Cooter Suit Lana. Everybody say it with me. Cooter Suit Lana. Cooter Suit Lana deserves number one on everybody's list. It's the only figure I'm going to stand by and say everybody should say is the worst figure of 2020. Cooter Suit Lana. Cooter Suit Lana. Hey, maybe we'll make a Cooter Suit Pro Wrestling TC. Probably not. Probably not, but maybe we will. Probably not, definitely not, but maybe we will. Figure that one out. So, hope you guys like this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Follow me on Instagram, at FigHeel and at Unreleased Wrestling Figs. Check out the Unreleased Wrestling Figure Coloring Books, Volumes 1, 2, and 3. And four, as well as Color Mania, which features the first three volumes for a discounted price. And go to ProWrestlingTees.com slash FigHeel for all your merchandise needs. Have a good one, guys. Take it easy. Check out the Let Them Suffocate t-shirt on Pro Wrestling Tees. Keep coming back for more. Keep collecting. Keep hunting. And keep finding those goodies. Take it easy, guys. Peace. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Follow me on Instagram, at FigHeel, and at Unreleased Wrestling Figs. And you can visit the merch store at Pro Wrestling Tees and check out the Unreleased Wrestling Figure Coloring Books available now on Amazon.com, including Prime Shipping.